Hey everyone, it's John and today what we're going to do is another free network automation lab, so let's get to it. Okay, so this lab is going to be using the Cisco iOS XR Always On Sandbox. So there's a big advantage here and a big disadvantage. The first one is the advantage, that is that in order to be able to do this lab, you don't need to have to purchase any images or set up EVNG, all you need to do is to have an internet connection, as well as a terminal to be able to execute the scripts, so a virtual machine, or in my case, my Windows subsystem for Linux. Now here is the big disadvantage, and this is almost a warning to some of you that you may experience some errors trying to run this lab. Now the reason for that is that this lab here, this all was on Sandbox is a shared resource and if everyone tries to use it at the same time we're just going to get errors. Now unfortunately there's no way around this, all I can say is that if you do get errors trying to do this lab then simply just wait a while and retry again later. Especially during the start because I do anticipate more people once they see this video will all try to do the lab at the same time and well people are going to experience errors. So if that's you just hold back a little bit. Okay, so the first thing which I want to point out is that this has been recorded on the 16th of January 2021 and it's using the credentials for this DevNet sandbox at this time. So this is more a note for those who are watching this in the future. If you happen to experience errors accessing this lab, then just log on to the DevNet sandbox and make sure that the credentials have not changed. So let me just first show you what the credentials are right now then. So let's just Google Cisco always on sandbox. And we'll just click this top link here and then get started with Sandbox. Now it's going to prompt me for a login here to be able to check this information. So I'm going to log in with my GitHub credentials. Okay, so now I've logged in to the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. What I'm going to do is search for the Sandbox Labs up the left here. So I'm just going to search for XR. And this is the one we want here, the always on sandbox for iOS XR. So because it's always on, you don't have to reserve it. You can just click in and get access straight away. So if I click on this here, so as of right now, when I'm recording this, the way to access this device is via this address here. And this is going to be a netconf lab. So we're going to access it over port 10,000. And we can see that the username is admin and the password is Cisco12345 with a one here. And these are the credentials you're going to see in my lab. So this time what I'm going to search for is IPv0 GitHub. And if I just click this link here and I click on my repositories up the top. Now, right now, as I'm recording this, I've made this lab private. But when you see this video, this will be a public repository. So let me just click on this. And this is the lab here. This gives us all the instructions you need to be able to use this lab. So what I'm going to do is pull up a terminal. And let me just make a directory here. So I'll say mkdir and we'll just call this demo and we'll cd into demo. Now what I'm going to do is to create a Python virtual environment. So I'll say Python 3, m, venv, and then dot for create the virtual environment within this folder. Okay, now let's activate this virtual environment. So source bin activate and we can see that this virtual environment has now been activated. Okay, so now that we've activated our virtual environment, let's go about installing those dependencies and we can find this information on the lab. So we go back to the GitHub and we just scroll down here. We're going to see the two libraries we need to install are Nornir Scraply and Nornir Ginger 2. Now Nornir Scraply should automatically just install the basic Nornir core anyway. So just installing Nornir Scraply should just be enough. So you can install this with using either pip3 or just regular pip. I'm just going to use pip itself. So I'll copy this and all I'll say is Python 3, m for module and then pip and then copy this in and enter. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for Nornir Ginger 2. So I'll say Python 3 M and then install Nornir Ginger 2. Hit enter. Okay, great. We've now installed the dependencies. Let's go about cloning the repository then. So we'll go up to the lab and then click on code here. Then let's get the address of the repository and just copy this. Now what I'm going to say is git clone and then paste this in and hit enter. Okay, great. So if we do an ls, now you can see we have this folder called iOS XR Netconf Lab. This is where all our configuration files live. So let's cd into this directory then. So if you do an ls, you're going to see a bunch of files. Now the first one I'm going to go into is the host.yaml file. We'll do vim host.yaml. So this is all you need to be able to connect to this device. You don't need a VPN or anything like that. This address here, this is like typing into your browser www.youtube.com and it takes you to YouTube. And this address on this port is going to allow you to be able to access the iOS XR always on device via Netconf. That's it, no VPN, just an internet connection. 
Okay, now where the configurations or the device are actually stored is within the host vars directory. So if we go into that directory, we only have one device because that's just a sandbox. But let's go into it then. So we'll say vim r1.yaml. Okay, so this file is where we define all of our host variable information. This is the configurations we're going to push onto the device. So what you can do is simply change those values as you see fit. So say for example, we'll change this to all the sevens. We'll change the router ID to 43, whatever. Let's remove this interface and we'll change area 431 to area 435. Okay, now a word of warning here. See this part here? This is actually quite a little bit of a quirk. So the BGP autonomous system number, you can actually replace this via an operation replace, which is what we're doing. What you have to do is send a delete request to it and then you can reconfigure it. So be aware that if someone happens to be using this box and they happen to choose a different autonomous system number and then you go on here and try to replace it, you might get an error, in which case what you'll have to do is to SSH into the box and just manually remove that BGP autonomous system configuration and then run the script again. Or alternatively, you can craft your own RPC to send a delete request. So I'm just going to leave this at 65001, but again, if somebody's been using the box before me, they might have changed it, so be aware. So if I wanted to add another neighbour, all I would do would be to copy the same format. So I'll say neighbour 78. 78, 78, 78, and the remote AS will be 555. And at the bottom here, we've got all our access control lists. Just as before, you can edit or amend this as you see fit. So with that said, what I'm going to do is exit out and then run the script and see what happens then. Okay, so let's go back to the directory. If we do an LS, this is the script we're going to actually deploy, the xrdemo.py. So all we're going to say is python3 xrdemo.py. And boom, now we've configured the network. So let's log into the device and manually verify our changes. So let's go back to the GitHub repository. And we're going to see that to manually log in, we use these credentials here. So let's SSH in, copy this, and just hit enter. And the password is Cisco12345 with a 1 for the I. So what we can do is a show run. And there is our NTP configuration, which we see here, which has been changed to all the sevens. Here we have our access control list, one, two, and three, with our remarks and our rule. There we have our OSPF configuration, and there we have our BGP configuration. So let me just exit back out this. Okay, so remember what I said was the one you don't want to change here is the BGP autonomous system number. So let me just try to amend this to something else. And when we go to commit the configuration, what we're going to see is we're going to get an error, which is this error here. See this? So if this happens when you go to configure something, the best thing to do is to log into the device manually and just remove the BGP configuration. So what we'll do is we'll go back into our host files and we'll change this to 65001. Now we can change all this information, the networks and the neighbours, but just not the autonomous system number. This is just a little netconf quirk we have. Maybe remove this one here and let's remove these neighbours. So let's save this and push out the new configuration. And now this time it's going to commit the change no problem. Now if you don't want to actually have to log into the device using SSH, you'll notice here that I've also configured these get scripts. We've got get ACL, we've got get NTP, as well as get BGP and get OSPF. So what I can do is just simply execute one of these scripts and pull back the relevant information over netcom. So let's do that for say NTP. So we'll say python3 get ntp.py. And boom, there we have it. There is our NTP configuration. We have servers, all the fours, all the sixes, and all the sevens. And if you want to do the same, you can grab the BGP information using the get BGP script, so on and so forth. So that's it. That's the lab. So I encourage you to go in, mess about with the values, change things up, and see how you get on. Just be aware, and I stress again, that this is a shared resource. And particularly just when this video comes out, if everyone all tries to use it at the same time, then it's not going to work. So if that happens, then bookmark it and get back to it later on. Okie doke, so keep laughing, keep practicing. This is John, signing off. Thanks very much, and I'll see you soon.